Welcome <laughs> to the age of Aquarius. <laughs> That's not how the song goes. We're here. I, I was trying to remember how this how the song went the age, age of aquarius okay, okay okay yeah that's a good song man that's one of my favorite songs of all what's time. it called the age of aquarius it is actually i'm not <laughs> sure let, let me look it up is it really no no I'm, i don't i think it's called like 5d ascension or something like that it's some really weird name for age. a second i was thinking it was that neil young song no but no that's that uh, hey speaking of, i'm i'm so glad you said oh it's called aquarius slash let the sun shine in but the song says it's actually called the fifth dimension. <laughs> oh no no, the artist is the fifth dimension. <laughs> okay, 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 yeah, it's Aquarius <laughs> slash Let the Sunshine In because the second half of the song goes Let the Sunshine and it just changes. Yeah. Anyway, so Can I'm we glad we talk about both of those things today. What the song? The Age of Aquarius and when the sun shines in. <gasps> yeah. Well, I'm already going to I have some notes, gentlemen. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Does a gentleman? He said it, not me. He's not a gentleman. He's a oh. savage. <laughs> he's a barbarian. He's a dog. He's yeah. a barbarian. He's a barbarian. Like from Shogun. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's he's a barbarian. He's a dog. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm I'm glad you said the Neil Young thing because I was thinking of that specifically in mind today when I was reading these notes, and I did another thing. I didn't know it would go this route, but I ended up reading some like really old manuscripts from like Rosicrucian text from the early 1900s. And, you know, talking about Aquarius and astrology and things oh, like that. Oh, cool. And I read something that I had never seen before. And I literally was like, huh? Like, I was just scratching my head. Like, I have never heard this. This is insane. And it's really cool. So, it, and it ties to the Neil Young thing. So, we'll get to that. Because if you remember it the lyrics. Sh it should be said for any relatively new um, listeners, that doesn't happen a whole lot with Ryan like Ryan's probably heard of most of these concepts at least heard of it in passing it made me scratch my head because it was stuff that isn't so far off from like what the beings indicated to my dad that I had never read in a document before and mm. I was like I, I, I was literally I literally said out loud I was like what the fuck <laughs> you know and anyway so a lot of shit is like surprising to me because i don't like dig for this info i wait for you to tell me about this info but when you haven't heard of something that's that's got my so interest. it's gonna be a bit before i get to that point because i'm gonna go in order here but that's cool but um i'll let you know when we're there yeah so we're gonna read some texts today from max heindel this was written in 1911. The text is The Rosicrucian Mysteries, mm -hmm. an elementary exposition of their secret teachings. Okay. Now, why are we doing an episode called The Age of Aquarius and I'm reading these Rosicrucian teachings? Well, I'll tell you. Because in the 1600s, um, in Germany, Paris, and I can't remember the other countries at the moment, but it, it was a few European countries in around like 1611, 1614, 1617. There was a few different years where manifestos started popping up mm. saying, hey, we're mm. the Rosicrucians. We're on the scene. We're working towards advancing the consciousness of humanity to a new era of enlightenment. In the coming years, you know, our understanding is going to evolve. It was, it was stuff like that. The, I, I thought that the manuscripts were a little too long and it wasn't specifically uh, pertaining to the age of Aquarius. So I'm saving that for another day. But in the manifestos that came out in the 1600s, they said, we're this ancient secret society of hermeticists, cabalists, and alchemists. And we trace our roots back to the Pharaoh Thutmose III. And, you know, we're, we're invisibly working behind the scenes to progress the consciousness of humanity stuff like that mm. so i was like okay and i wanted to keep looking and i was like let me see if i can find some like ancient documents that talk about the age of aquarius because when you think age of aquarius you think 1960s right yeah yeah like off sure. the top of your head for like, sure like, like the most mentions of it seem to be around that time period like watch this hey alex name me one text that talks about the age of aquarius you can't right no, that's can't. that's the point I couldn't. Nobody could. Where well, we're going to today. So, again, The Rosicrucian Mysteries, an elementary exposition of their secret teachings by Max Heindel, 1911. Now, these are real teachings mm. of the early 1900s formation of the ancient mystical order Rose Crucis, mm. which is like the modernized version of the Rosicrucian right. order. All right. For the purpose of promulgating the Rosicrucian teachings in the Western world, the Rosicrucian Fellowship was founded in 1909 
It is the herald of the Aquarian age when the sun by its processional passage through the constellation Aquarius will bring out all the intellectual and spiritual potencies in man which are symbolized by that sign. As heat from a fire warms all objects within the sphere of its radiations, so also the Aquarian ray will raise the earth's vibrations to a pitch we are as yet unable to comprehend. Though we have demonstrations of the material workings of this force and the inventions which has revolutionized life within the memory of the present generation. We have wondered at the x-ray which sees through the human body, but each one has a sense latent which, when evolved, will enable him to see through any number of bodies or to any distance. Ooh. We marvel at the telephone conversations across the continent of America, but each has within a latent sense of speech and hearing that is far more acute. We are surprised at the exploits of ships under sea and in the sky, but we are all capable of passage underwater or through the sky. Nay, more, we may pass unscathed through the solid rock and the raging fire if we know how. And lightning itself is slow to compare to the speed with which we may travel. This sounds like a fairy tale today, as did Jules Verne's stories a generation ago, but the Aquarian Age will witness the realization of these dreams, and ever so much more that we still do not even dream of. Such faculties will then be the possessions of large numbers of people who will have gradually evolved them as previously the ability to walk, speak, hear, and see were developed. Therein lies a great danger, for obviously anyone endowed with such faculties may use them to the greatest detriment of the world at large, unless restrained by a spirit of unselfishness and all-embracing altruism. Therefore, religion is needed today as never before to foster love and fellow feeling among humanity so that it may be prepared to use the great gifts in store for it wisely and well. Oh, this wow. need of religion especially felt in a certain class where the, e the ether is more loosely knit to the physical atoms than in the majority, and on that account they are now beginning to sense the Aquarian vibrations. This class is again divided into two groups, and one, the intellect is dominant, and the people in that class therefore seek to grasp the spiritual mysteries out of curiosity from the viewpoint of cold reason. They pursue the path of knowledge for the sake of knowledge, considering that an end in itself. The idea that knowledge is of value only when put to practical constructive use does not seem to have presented itself to them. This class we may call occultists. The other group does not care for knowledge, but feels an inner urge Godward and pursues the path of devotion to the high ideal set before them in Christ, doing the deeds that he did as the as far as their flesh will permit, and this in time results in an interior illumination which brings with it all the knowledge obtained by the other class and much more. This class we must describe as mystics. Mm. Certain dangers confront each of these two groups. If the occultist obtains illumination and evolves within himself the latent spiritual faculties, he may use them for the furtherance of his personal objects to the great detriment of his fellow men. Oh. That is black magic, and the punishment which it automatically calls down upon the head of the perpetrator is so awful that it is best to draw the veil over it. I'm going to pause here. Wow. I'm not knocking the the existence or concept of New Age beliefs because the reality is New Age beliefs, as people understand it, come from these ancient mystical practices. There is truth in New Age, but there's also a spin on it. But when I when I read this, I think of people who are like, you know, I'm 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 manifesting my shit. I'm manifesting my love spell, my love potion, and get this guy to be into me. Or you know, there there's people like that that are like, I'm using my manifesting to get what I want. Get this. Get that. Rich, famous, whatever. Yeah. Anything that, yeah. that that's at the detriment of others or for the gain of nothing but personal gain right personal material gain yeah, i'm not saying the stuff isn't real i'm saying right. people with that oh i'm spiritual but you know i uh i put a little herb in a jar to curse so and so it's like well you're a black magician right according to the you know the mystery traditions your intentions are evil just saying. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're like doing something with the intention of having a negative effect on somebody else, like for sure. But then even to take it further, using this knowledge purely to like gain for self, gain materially, get, you know, that that's that kind of goes against the entire purpose of this magic. Right. It's like the magic, the core of it is love. You know, it said like, yeah the world you know needs religion now more than ever to unify us and bring love that's the core of it right yes i'm almost done with this excerpt and then i want to discuss it that is black magic and the punishment which it automatically calls down upon the head of the perpetrator is so awful that it is best to draw the veil over it the mystic may also err because of ignorance remember there were two classes the yeah, occultist, occultist who wants it because of the knowledge the right. mystic wants it because 
they don't care about the knowledge. They just innately want it. Right. It, it said they have an innate connection to godliness. I don't or, even care to know. I just want to be close to God. Right. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of people that I grew up around that are like that. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I never really understood it, but it does make sense to me when it's explained in this way. The mystic may also err because of ignorance and fall into the meshes of nature's law, but being actuated by love, his mistakes will never be very serious and as he grows in grace the soundless voice within his heart will speak more distinctly to teach him the way the rosicrucian fellowship endeavors to prepare the world in general and the sensitivities of the two groups in particular for the awakening of talent of latent i'm sorry i don't have my glasses on for the awakening of the latent powers in man so that all may guide it safely through the danger zone and be as well fitted as possible to use these new faculties effort is made to blend the love Without which Paul declared a knowledge of all the mysteries worthless with a mystic knowledge rooted and grounded in love so that the pupils of this school may become living exponents of this blended soul science of the Western wisdom school and gradually educate humanity at large in the virtues necessary to make the possession, the possession of the higher power safe. So this is a fraction of an entire book. Now, don't you find this a little crazy? That we have this ancient order that we historically can verify has been around for a bare minimum accepted scholarly, you know, they only go by what you can actually prove. They've been around at least 400 years, right? We're talking this text came out in 1909 or was it 1909? 1911 rather. Either way, dude, they're talking about the age of Aquarius as a matter of fact, so far in advance of everyone else hearing about it in the 1960s saying like, oh, no, no, listen. There's going to be an age when we all awaken, when we all have these spiritual powers and abilities, and we all have this closeness and higher knowledge and resonance with God, and we're going to be able to use these powers, and we have to do it with love, or it'll be like, and it goes on to say, you know, like, um, in a different text from the same author, I'm going to, I'm going to show you where he talks about some of the Atlantean powers and how, you know, it was out of control and things like that. But mm. I, I just find that so weird. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's like, okay, so back in 1911, this was written, you yeah. said? Back in 1911, they're saying that in some undetermined date in the future, there will be an astrological shift where we'll go into an age where we reach abilities within ourselves that far surpass even what the technology was at the time, even what the current technology is. And you know what's funny? Like we've spoken to some people who like are Rosicrucians currently, mm -hmm. and like the common theme is always, it's it's all about selflessness. It's all about yeah. service to others. Uh -huh. That's what it is. It, that it's always that service to the world. Right. It's always service to others. Um, that right there is literally saying like you can do it for yourself, and like that's one of the two groups of people that are going to do it, but. There will be a karmic punishment upon right, it. and the real way to do it, and the real way to be the most potent form of this magic, is doing it selflessly with love for your fellow man. Exactly, you know. That I'm kind glad of thing. you picked up on that. Oh, but yeah, absolutely. It, it, so, okay, so why am I quoting these texts? And I have more from the same author, um, and it's a different book, and and it's going to get crazier in the next one it's a breakdown of the esoteric symbolism of like the astrological signs throughout the ages what they mean the piscean age the taurian age the arian age like aries the ram and, right yeah you know but um what i wanted to do going into this episode was establish some sort of historical legitimacy to the prophecy of the age of aquarius because when you google age of aquarius the first thing you see is it's some new age hippie bullshit came out in the 60s there's no proof uh the astrological age won't even be here until like 2600 and it's like mm, that's not good enough for me right you know what i mean especially considering the lady sitting on the wall with us here behind nick told my dad it's about the age of Aquarius. It's coming. So I was like, okay, so how can I use reason or my sort of investigatorial skills to find historical evidence that there was a claim that predates like modern conversation? Right. The deeper I dug into this, the more evidence there was. Like That it was talked about a long time ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. And, you know, a long time ago, as early as 100 years, and... Again, it, you know, even in the 1600s manifestos, it doesn't say the word uh, 
age of Aquarius. It right. says a new age of enlightenment, mm. right? So it's like, okay, well, they're talking about the same thing. Right. But then it's like, the reason I'm quoting this text is because it's the same society 300 years later mm-hmm. saying it with this terminology. You see what I'm saying? A- yeah. Age of Aquarius. Yeah. For all we know, they could have been... They could have known that this age was coming for a long time and they were trying in one way or another to figure out or try to pinpoint roughly where it would be astrologically. And within that time, they may have figured out like, oh, it's Aquarius. Now, what if they were suggesting that Jesus was saying that it's about the age of Aquarius? Uh, I would find that pretty shocking, to be honest. Well, let's keep going. Okay. What if they've been saying it for thousands of years that it's been all of like the entire crux of the experience of mankind has been all about the progression towards the age of Aquarius. You see what I'm saying? Bro, you get me excited. Would you, uh, would you like your glasses? No, I'll just hold it real close. (laughs) I appreciate it though. Um, the message of the stars written by the same guy, Max Heindel in 1918. This is where it gets to the part that I'm going to bring up about the Neil Young song. And, and let's, let's just get into it. Concerning the future evolution of planets, the Rosicrucian Cosmo Conception teaches on page 256 that when the beings upon the planet have evolved to a sufficient degree, the planet becomes a sun, the fixed center of the solar system. When the beings there have evolved to a still greater degree, and consequently it has reached its maximum of brilliancy, it breaks up into a zodiac and becomes, so to speak, the womb of a new solar system. Thus the great hosts of divine beings, who until then were confined upon that sun, gain freedom of action upon a great number of stars whence they can affect in different ways the system which grows up within their sphere of influence. The planets or man-bearing worlds within the zodiac are constantly being worked upon by these forces, but in various ways, according to the stage, they have reached an evolution. I never started my clock. <laughs> have never, uh, they have reached an evolution. Our sun could not have become a sun until it set out from itself all the beings who were not sufficiently evolved to endure the high rate of vibration in the great luminosity of the beings who were qualified for that evolution. All the beings upon the different planets would have been consumed had they remained in the sun. This visible sun, however, though it is a place of evolution for beings vastly above man, is not by any means the father of the other planets. As evolution, I'm sorry, it was listing the, the cha- in really old books, it'll take the chapter and it'll keep putting it throughout the pages and it, it was weird when I copied it. Mm. So let me do that again. As not by any means the father of other planets, as material science supposes. On the contrary, it is itself an emanation from the central sun, which is the invisible source of all that is in our solar system. Our visible sun is but the mirror in which are reflected the rays of energy from the spiritual sun. Remember, Whoa. we talk about how the Masons believe that too. They say it's serious, Whoa, the blazing star series. Crazy. The real sun is as invisible as the real man. From this teaching, it is apparent that the great spiritual hierarchies which are now guiding our evolution have had their training for this path in previous schemes of manifestation. Also, that what they are now doing, we shall someday do for others. It's the great macrocosm. We're going to evolve to the light beings and help the ones after us eventually. Wow. Already the foremost among our race are treading the path of initiation and have thereby advanced into stages far beyond the general status of our present humanity. It has been learned that those who have gone through the mercurial school of the lesser mysteries and have graduated from the school of the greater mysteries are now preparing human evolution for the Jupiter period. They have entered the planet Jupiter by way of one of the moons which serves as a stepping stone. Now, just a note here. They're talking about reaching some form of ascended light body where you can just astrally travel through the universe. They're not talking right, about right, like right. getting ships and going to another right, planet. They're talking yeah. about realms. Yeah. You know, others there are unfortunately who have gone the other way. We read in the Rosicrucian Cosmo conception that even as the whole population of the earth was at one time expelled from the present sun because of their inability to keep up with the vibrations of the beings thereon, Garden of Eden. Oh, oh damn. Atlantis. Wow, it it literally sounds like Atlantis. That was the first thing I thought, but when you said Garden of Eden, 
Wow, that's crazy. Thus hindering them and being hindered themselves. So also it became necessary in the Lemurian epoch Mm. to expel a number of the stragglers from Earth. Thus the moon was cast out into space to revolve as a satellite around our present planet. Those unfortunates are gradually degenerating and the time will come when they will all go to the planet Saturn, which is the door to chaos. Thence they will be expelled to enter planetary space to await the time when in a new system there will be a favorable condition for their further evolution. Don't you remember the lyrics for the Neil Young song? There were silver, there's silver, I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's like their silver ships were flying Flying into the sun. The new home in the sun. New home in the sun. Right. Yeah. And then it said again, our new home in the sun. Now, the beings told my dad, granted, you know, my dad has had a lot of different encounters that aren't contained within the text of episode 9 and 17 of the podcast where he had hypnotic regressions. I mean, there have been other instances where he's seen them that are not documented and hasn't had a hypnotic regression to recall. But one thing that they told him was that they come from the sun. Right. That, that, that there's, there's a portal in the sun. And they showed him the sun and said that it was significant and that it would somehow be returning and I don't quite get it, but my point is, I, I just find that very fascinating that in this hundred plus year old document, these Rosicrucians, which is, you know, this purported ancient order, we know they're really an ancient order. Yeah. I mean, that's documented. That's well documented. It's, that's not up for debate. It's believed that although their manifestos were popping up in the 1600s, it was believed that they were actually, now when I say actually, I mean from a historical scholarly perspective, right? It right. could in truth be much older. Mm-hmm. But we're talking paper trail, what they believe to be verifiable accuracy that they formed at least as early as the 1400s. So we're talking about a society that is at least 600 years old. Yeah. And I'm talking bare minimum. Yeah. And they're saying this. Yeah. And in reality, so many ancient traditions are are passed down orally. And so there's not going to be a paper trail. Exactly. Like, so many. Exactly. So many. Yes. But even if it was just 600 years ago, you know, that's that's I mean, it's it's pretty wild either way that this information was emerging around that time, even if it is 600 years ago. But it something tells me it's way because think about it. They're talking about Lemuria. Mm-hmm. They're talking about Atlantis. Yeah, in the next excerpts, there's going to be some Atlantis stuff. And, and and we know that there were other societies, other other mystery traditions studying those same things thousands of years ago. So it's like you think they just stumbled across the same information and decided to start their own organization adjacent to these other ones? Probably not. It was probably that they were doing this around the same time thousands of years ago. And we're just kind of finding out about it because yes. of a quote unquote paper trail, like around the 14, 1600s. But like low key, they're, they got to be way older than that. Absolutely. They have to. Absolutely. And there was one body of knowledge and throughout time and, and cultures are different. And, and, you know, let's just say there were five people in the, just hypothetically, it's, it's ridiculous and it's absurd, but hypothetical. There's five people in, in, the original OG mystery school, we're talking, let's just say like 13,000 years ago, right? If yeah. that's even correct. There's five dudes in there and they're all buddies and they're they're drinking Natty Light and, you know, because Jesus <laughs> Working did. out. Yeah. Right. You know. Lifting weights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hitting the gym And, and they're talking, oh, shoot. And, uh, and by the way, there's a development. Apparently, um, Coors Light is enjoyed by Gandhi. We, yeah, we learned that. Yeah, today. no, we yeah we discussed that through conversation. We did. And we figured it out. <laughs> it was a it was a quite scholarly discussion. I thought it was Buddha. I would say we're gonna have You're to right. stop everything. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was Gandhi. I'm gonna need to be filled in here. It was definitely Gandhi. Was it? Yes. Okay. But Buddha's Bud Light, bro. Oh B- yeah. Buddha's Bud yeah, Light. Yeah, that's right. And then India Pale Ale is for Allah. Why wouldn't it be for India? Oh. Like uh, Krishna or, or... Okay, I'll think of something else for a law then. We're going to start thinking on that one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go no, because... Oh, we had a scholarly discussion. Yeah. Isn't that... Um, that's Muslim, right? What, a law? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. And that's forbidden. Okay. Alcohol is okay. forbidden. Uh, then they get the uh, Odul's, the, the <laughs> alcohol-free beer. <laughs> okay. Or the oh. Heine Zeros. Yeah, yeah. Odul's for Allah. I, I, f- I figured out what it is in India, man. I know what Krishna. It's ganja. Oh, <laughs> damn. 
dumb as ganja. Okay, 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 okay. So let's pretend there were five guys in the original <laughs> Mystery <laughs> right, School, right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Like the restaurant. Five guys. Yeah, exactly. Five guys was the original wisdom tradition. And they're, and they're all learning the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. One goes to Greece. You know, even though that didn't exist 13,000 years ago, but the region eventually it turned into different lands and they have different languages and different cultures. One goes to Greece, one goes to Tibet, one goes to Egypt, one goes to Jerusalem. I don't know if that was five or not, but you get the point. Right, right. Over time, you're going to have the Masons, Mm -hmm. the Kabbalists, the Hermeticists, the Alchemists, the Knights Templar, the Cathars, the Rosicrucians. Why are they all saying the same thing? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because it's one original knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what it is. And why are these others considered like completely legitimate and people look at Rosicrucians like, I don't know, it's not that old. It's like, I don't. It's the same information. Yeah. And and then the other thing to consider as well is like, I think the biggest stigma around all of this is that it's all evil. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Because the Masons, you know, they, they, they gave a bad name for themselves and um anyway so well also there's you know there are things like in the bible that say things like warn about occultists and like occult knowledge and stuff like that so that scares people too right yeah but okay so here's what i think about the age of aquarius and then i have a couple more excerpts that i wanted to get into i i feel like i feel like the age of aquarius is not just like oh It'll be here in 28 hours, 43 minutes, and 52 seconds. Like, it's not like a mark. It's not a moment in time. Mm -hmm. I think it's like when you're turning on and filling a bathtub. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. you want the water to be hot, but it heats in stages. Right. You know? Slowly. Slowly. And and there's, there's no... Oh, you know, first of all, you're getting in your bathtub, and you're like... It, it, it's kind of warm, but it's not exactly where I want it to be. And, and maybe it needs another three minutes or whatever. And it's just like this continuous gradual phase or steps and phases to where it finally gets to that destination. That's, that's how I think it really is. I think it's always been portrayed or maybe interpreted as there's like going to be some magical date, you know, but I, I don't think it's like that. I think it's actually happening right now. Yeah. Like literally like in the present moment right now. I think that we are, I've been saying this, I feel like we're knocking on the door of the age of Aquarius. And I think that absolute, I don't, I think the 2600 thing is complete bull crap. I think that we are in our lifetime going to live through the transition. I think it's sooner than people think. And I think that we are not even in the early stages. I think we're in the middle stages. Really? Yeah. So you think that this uh, age of Aquarius awakening like will reach its pinnacle within our lifetime? Absolutely, I do. Wow. Yeah, because that's what the lady said, mm-hmm. that it's happening, it's coming, and that's what it's all about. That's mm-hmm. what all of this is all about. But, dude, could you imagine have our experience 2007 and, and, and at first, what, the, what do they look like? What does the craft look like? Right, what do the beans right. look like? What, and it's like... It's, I don't know, you know, the, the, they were glowing, and, and, and do you want to know what they said? Ah, uh, it's bullcrap. No, what do they look like? Yeah, yeah, what, what do they look like? Yeah. People were asking the wrong questions right, the whole right. time, but this is what it's always been. This is what they've always been saying, like the crux of this entire experience that our family has had is, hey, something in the future is going to happen. There is going to be a great change. Humankind is going to... Uh, awaken basically there's there's going to be a great revelation of all of it you know the mysteries and whatever but um so i thought this was really interesting did you guys know that this april there's going to be a major eclipse no i did not let's look into that yeah it's very cool stuff it's going to be like the first major eclipse since like 2017 or 18 And it's going to be, I think it's called the Great North American Eclipse. When we think in terms of um, astrological events, eclipses, alignments, to me, those are like, those are your checks on on the clock for the cycling of the zodiacs and things like that. Ah, right, right. It's like a waypoint or like a, yeah, yeah. The Great North American Eclipse, which by the way, we got to go see that. 
Go see what? The eclipse. It happens April 8th. What do you mean we got to go see it? Dude, we got to like get together and like actually witness the event. Oh, I thought you meant like we wouldn't be able to see it from where we're at. Oh, we should be, but I'm just saying we should make Isn't it. Isn't there some places that are better for seeing these? No, that's things? definitely true. I remember the last major one that happened, like we couldn't see it super well, but you know, it's crazy. You look on the ground and all the shadows and lights are like little crescents. Yeah. That's like. Uh, I looked at the sun that day. <laughs> there was another I'm not, thing. I'm not kidding. I stared at the sun that I remember it vividly. I was at work. The last eclipse, the big one. I think we were working together. At we might have been time. I, went, I had I just went moved out back, here. and it, right in the middle of it, you could stare at the sun. I went. I saw Damn. on campus with Jenny when she first moved here and was in college. I might not uh, have even no, been working. Yeah, with that yet. was early then. It was 2017 or 2018. But this is the. This is going to be on that level, like a legit, like probably have to wear the glasses, view the eclipse. But there was another you important. You don't need the glasses. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> you, you absolutely do need the glasses. Yeah, you absolutely do. do. Go get the glasses. Don't blind our viewers and listeners, please. No, get the glasses. <laughs> I'm wrong. Um, That's what big glasses want you to say. <laughs> there, there was another major astrological event that happened this year, which is why I bring up the eclipse. And it was, I think it was in March. No, it's not even March yet. That was last year. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Ryan, time travel. It was in February or January. I, fuck, I don't know, man. I don't know <laughs> what are it you talking about. It wait. was when Pluto was in Aquarius for the first time in like 250 years, like since the 1700s. Oh, I remember that. It was recent. I think it might have been January. I don't know. Something like that. But it's also leap day today. Yeah, it, it is. is leap see, day. my brain just leaped there and I went forward a month. <laughs> <laughs> I went forward a day, dude. Tomorrow's March. It should be March. It should be, right? And that's why us, I said March. They made us work an extra day this I'm year. I'm excused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excused. No, I swear it was January or February. It was one of those other two You're months, excused. man. You're excused. But, but I, I just, I, I, I find it interesting that there are these like massive astrological events that have been happening in the last few years. There's so many we can't even count them all. There was like two super moons in one month last fall. Oh yeah. And it was December of 2020 or 2021. There was the alignment of, uh, it was, it was like literally Amazing. the star of Bethlehem. Right, right, right. You know, and there's been all these, it was like a three planet alignment. Exactly. A huge. alignment. And there's been all these crazy astrological events happening in, in recent years. And I think that, those are happening not by accident, but that it's evidence that there is something happening in the cosmos. Like I'm going to read from another excerpt here in a minute, but it says that there would be great signs and wonders in the heavens at the turning of the age. Could that potentially be what Stephen uh, Kubrick was? What St Stanley Kubrick? <laughs> It's March, dude. It's March, man. Yeah, it's yeah. a leap day. It's it a is. leap day. It's a leap day. I'm, I'm, I'm excused. Fuck yeah. You are. <laughs> I said Stephen Kubrick. <laughs> I'm talking about 2001: A Space Odyssey. That's his yeah. brother, right? No, it's not. He didn't have a brother, I don't think. I don't know, but if he did, his name's probably Steven. <laughs> but anyway, that's in 2001: A Space Odyssey. Yes. And you know, there's definitely some occult drippings throughout his movies and like around him, and you know, uh, in 2001, if you haven't seen it, like the the whole way that the beings show the main character, like. Or, or take him through the evolution of consciousness is by giving him signs with like astrological alignments and like showing him where the monolith is going to be next. So he keeps chasing it and evolving his consciousness. It's he had, interesting. He had a sister, Barbara. Barbara. Oh, uh, well, great. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Astrologically, the 2024 <laughs> eclipse is going to occur at 19 degrees in Aries, which if you're into astrology or whatever, it's the sign of innovation. So it says, according to astrology, the total eclipses bring changes in leadership. The sun's zodiac sign on a solar eclipse day suggests the nature of the change. So naturally it's an Aries. So that should be a shift in power, hmm. leadership, uh, the ability to develop or progress others from a perspective of leadership huh. um you know so either either way I, th I think eclipses are significant i think that's why like if you think about it the aztecs and we know that the aztecs were probably one of the most advanced astrological 
and astronomical societies in the history of the world with their star charts. Oh, absolutely. Now, you guys remember the movie 2012? Of course. That whole big mystique and everybody thinking it was the end of the world was literally because the um, the Mayan calendar ended in, in 2012. 20, exactly, in 2012. December 21st. Yeah. Naturally, they were wiped out. Right. So they weren't able to make the new one. But the point is, there's there's so much importance placed on the, the star systems of the Mayans and the Aztecs, who were like, they were right up on each other. Mm -hmm. They were sharing of knowledge and similar cultures and beliefs. Very well, similar cultures. Yeah. And they had very advanced star knowledge. Yeah. You see the movie, um, what's that Mel Gibson movie? God, it is Fashion a day, dude. Christ? No, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> the one about the Mayans and the Aztecs. Apocalypto. Apocalypto. Oh, well, I was uh, right. No, I've never seen it. We we've talked about bro. this before. I've never seen it either. I Yo, can't believe I was right. Hold on, movie night. We're watching that. Let's go. That you kidding me? That movie is crazy. Let's I'll watch say it. yes just because I got it right, dude. God, good. And and it, dude, that movie is so good. It it scarred me. I saw that when I was like 13, 14, 15, something like that. And and I feel like it was one of the best movies I've ever seen. And I bring it up because of the eclipse and it shows you a real uh, tradition that they honored where the Aztecs, sometimes they would sacrifice 10,000 people a day right. under the eclipse. Yeah. There was a belief that during the eclipse, the veil was thinner. You, you, you could petition the higher forces or commune with them more readily on the day of eclipse. So when there were these major eclipses, they would literally have, all day, we're talking 10,000 people. Bring them to the top of the temple, cut them open, rip their heart out. Now, naturally, that's evil. I don't of course, of you know, course. <laughs> condone look, that. Look, we've we've made this point clear in the past, but here at Bledsoe Said So, we, we are sternly against sacrifice. Yeah. And that's a bold stance for us to take. We are against sacrifice. But we will take it here on this podcast. We are. That was the Valentine's <laughs> Day episode. It was, yeah. <laughs> of last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. year. It's a leap day. That's a callback. I want to say something, though, serious, right? Because when I, think, star? when I think of, like, Aztec civilization, for some reason, you know, I kind of uh, liken that to, like, Native American tribes where I'm thinking it's rather small. Right. But then you right. hear these stories that are true of sacrificing 10,000 people in one day. And I'm like, you have that many people? Yeah. yeah. Like you have that many people to spare. Like if I feel like, if <laughs> like this, I feel like if the city that we live in, which is not big and it's not small, but I feel like if 10 million or 10,000 people just disappeared overnight, like you'd notice. It'd be, It'd be like the rapture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you have that like, many undesirables to just right, throw right, away. Right. <laughs> right. It's crazy. Yeah. Like to think of how massive that civilization actually was. Was. Oh yeah, and advanced spiritually in a advanced. Day? Now, granted, they were dark. They had very dark practices, but that doesn't mean you got to throw everything out. Exactly. That doesn't mean that all of the knowledge was false. We're right. just saying that you eclipses know? are pretty cool. We're not yeah. saying to sacrifice no. people. It's degrees. There's we very condone sacrifice wait no no we what? do not is condone. that the wrong word that's the wrong word dude it's the leap we, day bro we, we condemn condemn we condemn Sa sacrifice we can <laughs> ryan you just un all right all you got me are you an agent are you like a secret agent for the suicide club for the Aztecs? for the for sacrifice what? club it's a leap day i said the wrong word dude, what I is happening i swear to you bro this <laughs> what's happening this, I, I can't talk i'm telling you man it's 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 why can none of us say the right words i don't know alex I never just, says the I right i just words. don't say any words <laughs> I, I swear to you bro that like that's not a bit i just i just feel what's like what's happening let's just hang on just take five seconds. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's collect ourselves. Yeah. Five, a, a okay. moment of silence for, right. for the 10,000 you know lost. That's, that's not good sacrifice. for the 10,000 lost that we do not 10, condone. A day per a day. eclipse. We're going to take a couple <laughs> seconds right no, now. No, we're not because that's dead air and that's not good for podcasting. No, it is. It is. It's fine. So, Just gather so. yourself. <laughs> gather yourself. All right. Everyone gather yourself for Alex. Do it for Alex. Oh, according to this, <laughs> eclipses are harbingers of change. They usher in evolution. The good thing about eclipses is that you generally can trust the dirt. You know what? I'm not even going to It changed that. about 10,000 people. My point lives. is there's an eclipse coming, and I put significance into that. I just think it's a big deal. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and thinking about this stuff going on, uh, I, I wanted to talk about 
the heavens, if you will, you know, the age of Aquarius and the change of the age. And if I'm going to be frank with you guys, I, I, I'm, I'm really starting to believe the 2026 shit. Like the, you always believe that. Well, I always tell it because it's what the lady, you know, had a message and then Uh other people gave the date. Uh huh. Right. So I never, yes. you know, I was like, oh, this is what yeah, they to said. Be, to be clear, the lady did not give the date. Never. Right, right. Nope. Never. That was all researchers that we've met. Human people. That's like NASA people or something, right? Or they used a NASA program. Them and, and uh, a book publisher and a NASA person both told us 2026. And then other people have, people have been like, I think it's uh, spring. I think it's fall. Dad tends to think spring, the alignment. Um, which is why he wrote around Easter time in his book. Hmm. And some conversations we've had recently lead me to to potentially believe the same. But, you know, I stress that it's always been a point of contention for me because all that was told was that there would be an alignment. And other people came up with this 2026 stuff. So right. in, in my mind, I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm a rational person, believe it or not. And I've always been <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm telling it because they said it, but I, I didn't always know how to feel about it. Oh, oh wait, Nick. Yes. We talked about this on full disclosure, and we'll talk about what full disclosure is for people who don't know. But on full disclosure, a couple weeks ago, I told Ryan that I was listening to this thing that this guy, this Egyptologist, was talking about when the Sphinx was erected, uh-huh. it was gazing at the star Regulus in the constellation Leo. What? Yes. Yeah, no that. way. Wait, how did you find this out? Uh, some Egypt guy was on Rogan, and I was listening to Rogan at work. Wow. And he was saying that he believes that, yeah, it was erected facing Leo. And then the lady Damn. said, you know, there's yeah. going to be an alignment where it's facing Leo. So, so then I we- said to my coworker, pause, pause, pause. <laughs> I got to tell you this. And then I said exactly what Ryan said. Damn. But for the people out there who don't know, full disclosure is Ryan's show uh, that's behind our uh, uh, Patreon perks. So you get into Patreon, you sign up, you get Discord and full disclosure and a bunch of other perks, including episodes early. But shameless plug there. Sorry. <laughs> Blitzel says so. Uh, Patreon.com slash Blitzel says so. Can't um, talk. Leap day. Yeah. No, I swear. There's something There's something <laughs> mentally funky. Like, I just, I just, I don't know, man. Like, dude, let's, let's slow down on the, uh, the astrological talk for a second and j- let's chop it up about life. Don't you feel like things have been weird? Oh, no, no, no. It's way past that at this point. It's way past that. Like it's it's so beyond weird, right? At this point, like I, yesterday or the day before, I had the one of the weirdest days that I've had in a long, 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 long time. I told Ryan it was like God was playing defense for me all day long. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Like I would have some major stressful thing come up that I have no idea how I'm gonna figure it out, and within minutes it would just disappear. And then like there was a, I, I it's was been on, over a month that this has been happening. Oh yeah. But I mean, it's all like bubbling up big time now. Like that same day I was on my lunch break in my car and like I had just finished my food and I was about to like start making phone calls. Cause we've talked about it. I'm moving to Wilmington like two right, days. right now in two From days, now in two days. Yeah. yeah. In two days we'll be here. This, this, by the time this is out, he lives here. Oh yeah. I live officially here. moved in. But I'm in my car and there's these things that really got to get figured out. I don't know how they're going to get figured out. I got to make these phone calls. I'm stressed. I'm literally like about to pick up the phone. And basically all of those issues that I had back to back to back called me. I would They would call me and like solve the issue for me with no effort on my part. I would hang up and like immediately another person would call me and solve another issue. It was so bizarre. And I had been praying for those things to get resolved. And it was like, I told Ryan, uh, another thing I said is it feels like since I like really put this effort forward, God just like rolled out a red carpet for me and was just like, here you go. Here's everything. It's all taken care of. It was freaky. It was literally like, oh, dude, you know, I really need to sell my washer, my dryer, yeah, stuff like that. You know, he's moving. I, I, I really need to wrap this up. And he would get a phone call from someone he knows. Hey, do you want your washer and dryer? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll buy it from you. It what? Yeah. It, it, and it was that after that, after that. And it was, it was so freaky. And I, you know, I gotta be honest with you guys. I mean, I know I already told y'all, but I, I felt like talking about it in the moment, but I've, I've been having it pretty good lately. I feel like not, not like a whole lot of crazy stress. And then today it was like my brain melted 
because I was hit with three or four really stressful things mm. all at once. Mm -hmm. And it just like short circuited my brain. And I felt like I reverted to a previous time where I was under like extreme pressure. Mm. But I kept thinking about like, you know, but even though I'm freaking out right now and I'm huffing and puffing and like, Oh my God, is this going to get worked out? Is this going to get worked out? Um, uh, it, it's pretty, it was pretty serious stuff, at least to me. And, uh, I just kept thinking, man, look at all that shit that Nick's been through. And then he comes here on the show and he says, you know what God did for him. And I was like, it's going to be all right. It's all right to stress about it, but it's going to be all right. And then sure enough, you got home. I was like, bro, I had a stressful day. And you were like, dude, it's God testing you. Yeah. I had that exact thought, not testing in a bad way, but more so I, I think it's like when you're evolving or leveling up in some way there's pressure applied to you mm -hmm. yeah you know? we, we talked about that earlier yeah that's why it's important to talk about your feelings folks because just me like talking about my feelings it it gave it was like valuable to you it helped you through a hard time like that's that's why i want to be alive to to help the people that i love get through life you know a little bit easier because it's fuck it's so fucking hard and yeah. my, my, the people I love do that for me, you know, it's like, we, we're all one big net of love and we just got to like be open and, and like, right. You know, so I'm glad that you, you said, Dude, that. I swear really I was, cool. I was like getting email, you know, I'm not going to go into, to, to like sensitive information, but like I'm buying a house. So it's stuff like that. And it's, it's very stressful and oh, yeah. there's a lot of variables that are not, you know, hard details yet and it's like this rolling timeline of a lot of things that you have to get done and one little thing could the whole deal could go away you know and um it, i was just going through a bunch of those little moments all at once it was like bang 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 three or four different things and i was driving in the car and at my first reaction i was leaving the bank and my first reaction the moment i got in the car was like fuck it's all gonna not work i'm you know, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. And then immediately I started, I started praying. I was like, God, it's fine. I'm giving it to you. In the thought in my head, I was like, it all worked out for Nick. Mm -hmm. That's just how it works. You know what I mean? I was like, it's going to be all right. In the past, I would have freaked out about it for days and days and days or weeks and weeks oh, and weeks yeah. and weeks. Oh yeah. That was me like a month ago when I was doing that, just right. freaking out about it endlessly until I finally just decided to give up and pray about it. And then it all just started getting fixed. And immediately I started saying, I'm not, it's going to be all right. I'm, I'm, it's going to be dealt with. And we handled all the stuff that we had to handle and sure it stressed me out. But at the end of the day, it did feel like, you know, why was I so stressed? Sure. Yeah. In that moment, it is crushing. It yeah. is so crushed. It feels like nothing in the world other than that matters. And like you can't get it out of your head and it's just completely gut wrenching. And then suddenly you ask for a little bit of help and it all disappears. Yeah. Or at least the fear disappears. Yeah. That's what I mean. You still got to solve the problem, that's but it's I mean. like you feel like you can do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I cleared up and I felt like I could do it. That's that's amazing, dude. That's, now, yeah. That's furthermore, cool. I feel like the whole world is going through this. Yeah, yeah. It's been a topic of conversation lately. It's like a lot of people that we know and like pe members of your family, members of my family, friends of yours, friends of mine are all going through very positive, transformative experiences right now. Yeah. Like everywhere everybody almost everybody i know is like leveling up and things are getting better and yeah. it's like genuinely the first time in a while years and like probably over five years probably that i'm feeling like hopeful about the world and there's some really fucked up stuff going on in the world right now but in the mi microcosm that is my life the people around me I'm seeing a lot of happiness and people thriving and positivity growth for the, for the first time in a long time. Now there are really bad things happening in the world. And now I'm never going to say that's a good thing, but I think that there are really, really bad things happening in the world because it's like we talked about the pressure. 
I think that like the way I think about it is there's like, I, I was talking about this with dad yesterday and me and you've been talking about this cause you've been living here for two weeks. Yeah. By the way, this is last night. He's Aww, lived here for two weeks. Sad. I feel like there's a window of energy open right now. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, not a literal window, but just like a metaphorical energetic seal has been broken or a veil has been removed. And I just feel like there is such a powerful energy of change right now that things are rapidly being pressurized. It's like alchemy, right? Like to turn the lead into gold, you put fire on it. You yeah. Put it under pressure and heat and it transforms into something better. And And I think that's happening throughout the whole world. And I think it's been a very long span of the entire civilization and cycle of humanity. I think this has been going on very gradually, but I think it's like a scale that gets faster and faster and faster and faster as we approach the age. Mm. And I think that things are shifting more rapidly and maybe there's more pressure, but it's like uh, transformative energies that are taking place like actually taking place in our lives you know and i feel like the world is going through a crazy shift right now uh, honestly i just wanted to talk about the age of aquarius because i i think i think it's happening and uh, i mean I, I i don't know when but i just i feel like you know and, and there's stuff too that um i'm under you know not not really in a position to talk about publicly yet just kind of like last year, you know, there's crazy stuff happening. Eight months later, turned out the History Channel thing. There's just stuff like that that's going on in my life that's crazier than ever before. That is like so insane, so supernatural, so unbelievable that certain things have happened. That it's like, for me personally and the experiences that I'm having behind the scenes and off camera and things that I probably am a year out from even talking about yet. I'm like, holy shit. Like this is the craziest time in my life right now. I just, I just feel like everything's different. But um, it so, is, man. You're going through a wild time right now. Oh yeah. And you're, you are, surfing on top of it like Alex. And you're gonna get right on through that. What do they call it? A barrel wave. Well, he's got a hog now. So is he even really a surfer anymore? <sighs> Can you be? Like both at the set, you can. You can be. Well, he's going to say yes. That doesn't. You're right. Yeah. He's biased. (laughs) Or he he's. uh, He's greedy. He he has vested interest in making me believe that. Yeah. So you're saying you can't. I think it's one or the other, man. I I agree. It's one (laughs) or the other, dude. I I think I should be a surfer and you should be a hog rider and we should. Well, no, no, no. I'll be the hog rider because you're. I'm scared of sharks. Right. And we'll see which one of us can win him. Oh. (laughs) Wait a minute. That's not where I thought that was going. Wait, so one of my friends is getting a motorcycle. The other one of my friends is getting a surfboard. And somehow this is supposed to make me feel anything but good. <laughs> no, dude. No, no, it's, no. it's always going to make you feel good because we're trying to win you. But which one yeah. will you be loyal to? That's yeah. it. Both. <laughs> You, no, you can't I've, be both. No, no. What you're missing is the I've sharks won. and the jets, man. I've won. Yeah. You guys are, are partaking in my hobbies, <laughs> which up. is a win for me. <laughs> yeah. No, no. You, yeah. It, 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 it'll be a win for me when I get you to commit to only hog riding. <laughs> no more surfing. <laughs> we ride hogs. <laughs> we ride hogs in this household. I'll have a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> we ride hogs. <laughs> Someone out there in the a world, a sticker on your car. Oh, on my hog. <laughs> Someone out there listening to the show. Some, you know, one of the the several thousand people actually owns a hog, and they're like, "These guys are dorks." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy is Blake. He owns a hog. That guy is Blake. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Blake. So anyway, enough of my um. What what do they say? They say uh, your hog riding. Did you see me and Blake on uh, the other morning. No, called, called me out so little the motorcycle information. on Discord. Oh like, yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, he's yeah. like, uh, Alex got a motorcycle, and then yeah, I posted a picture of it in Discord. Mm. So, so I make an it was a highlight of my day. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> well, clearly he's more inclined to hogs. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> and he's also from Florida, so no, I'm mean not you. from Florida. I mean you. You get really excited, but you know. Yeah, it's a new. It's a new <laughs> thing. It's like a, it, it's. <laughs> I get, I get, yeah. You're getting really excited, Alex, yeah. about about your hog. I can't wait to strap my surfboard to my hog and that's take not going to happen. Take it down to the beach. That's not going to happen. Surf. You have to be one or the other. We're, we're not going to be your friend anymore. 
or <laughs> or or we could be like it could totally be like an avatar situation and oh. and after great conflict and 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 pain and suffering but <laughs> but then eventually growth we we could merge both worlds <laughs> and sacrifice okay you can can we do real talk for a second sure um they're so different in the way, like in the hobbies, right? The hobbies are so incredibly different, right? Right. Like, and especially when you kind of dive into the culture, like you think of surf culture, it's just very like, yeah, laid back, whatever, man. And then, you ride, <laughs> and then like, I mean, but, but if you pull up next to like a pack of dudes on Harleys, like you're going to lock your doors. They're like, I'll kill you if you have the wrong sticker. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, but oh. they do the same thing for me in my head. Oh, what? Those hobbies do the same thing for you in your yeah, head? Yeah, it's and the what is same. That? Everything else disappears. Ah. Everything except for what you're doing right then ah. disappears. Like all the f like negativity, all the stress, everything bad is gone. It's behind you. It's like you're either like you're on the wave and it's you in the wave, never happening again. Or you're like hyper-focused <laughs> yeah, hyper on staying alive. All right. Uh, strapped to this like rocket, you know. Yeah. So it's just I was reflecting on that the other day. Maybe more of a full disclosure conversation, but honestly, that that's it. it sounds like those are like ultimately wholesome hobbies that bring you uh, some real profound um, comfort and uh, positivity. So you know what? I think I'm gonna go out on a limb here and officially say you can be both. I, I I'm rebuking my former statements. It. It, it may not be easy to do so, but I think in in a step towards open mindedness, I could work towards agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all it takes is your willingness. Yeah, you know, it, it might now me and him are on the same team, dude. There can only be one man. You either ride wave <laughs> or you ride pave, okay. bro. You know, this is such a little like uh, microcosm for like real world problems. Right? Like, <laughs> but Nick's absolutely right. Just, <laughs> you've uh, you've made an effort to listen, <laughs> and you know that's really like the first step right. in, in getting to some sort of middle ground. Yeah, it is. Man, that, that's just so cute that you would take it there. Let's cut away from this riffraff, and we're going to go to The Message of the Stars. The Message of the Stars. By Max Heindahl, written in 1918. Um, oh, I already read this one. Moving on. Wave or pave? Just... just. <laughs> God, dog. I just wanted to remind you. Humanity is to rise New to New custom license plate. <laughs> Sorry. Boy. I'm going to choke your hog. <laughs> Oh, I didn't use that one right. <laughs> Humanity is to rise to a wonderful spiritual height, and this is symbolized by the sun's processional passage through the royal sign Leo. Is, is this from the same author? Yeah, the, okay. same, the same text as the second excerpt. Gotcha, gotcha. The, pass, the sun's processional passage through the royal sign Leo pictorially represented by the king of beasts, the lion. This is an apt allusion to the king of creation who will then embody the three great virtues of the master man, strength, wisdom, and beauty. It is wonderful to trace the various phases of the religions given to the great Ario-Semitic race from the time they were called out in the latter third of the Atlantean epoch to the end of the Aquarian age mm -hmm. when a new race will have definitely been born. This aspect of the Zodiac will form the subject of the following pages. It will shed light on many of the most obscure passages of the Bible as only study of this cosmic science can. So we're talking about what they're painting here. Again, this is the Rosicrucians. They're painting yeah. this picture that there is, you know, like the scientific paradigm of the 20th century and even I think for much of the 21st century was there is no great cause and effect there is no karma there is no spiritual law there is no spiritual world um it's all just a complete random accident stemming from this one infinitely compressed particle that explodes and creates re reality by accident and then we accidentally evolved from some single or maybe multi-celled organism and crawled out of the sea and it's all a big freaking accident and it's meaningless well this provides an alternative perspective 
that the entire destiny of human civilization, spanning all the way back to the Atlantean epoch, tens of thousands or more years ago, all the way to the future age in Aquarius, when a completely new spiritually developed race of humankind is born, mm. it's all connected. Yeah. The total events of all of history, although we're living life and it's like, Going to work, paying taxes, got to get a new car. Oh, man, there's a hole in my shoes. We have all these little material problems that we're so focused on. And we go to the Rockefeller-created standard education system to high school and middle school and elementary school every day, and they teach us 1865 was the Civil War, and then, then you know, 1887 or whatever year was this revolution, and then this year was... The, it's all about wars. It's all about conflicts. It's all about the conquerors and who took over and this and that and the other. They don't teach you about all of these great advancements of spiritual philosophical movements and, and all, all of these, you know, mysteries throughout. It's like they don't teach about any of the spiritual or religious shit in school. As a matter of fact, it's legal, you know, that's, it was taken out. Yeah. Do you get a vibe that that's like just a Western thing or maybe even just like an America thing? It is for sure. Yeah. I, I think I, so. It is for sure. Yeah. So everybody's like, history book across the world is different. Right. Yeah, it's like it's just war, 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 conquer, 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 and then like just hardcore nuts and bolts science, like nothing else. I mean, we didn't learn even from many philosophers in school. Like we didn't didn't learn much about. If you did, it was in a science class. Yeah, it was like this was the origin of chemistry. Right. Or Remember? Uh, what algebra? Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they were philosophers, and and, they, and what's his name, Pythagoras, yeah. said yeah. so many cooler things. Oh yeah, than he, the theorem. He yeah. didn't even make that theorem. Yeah, no, that's what I read, and that's <laughs> what I'm the most fired up about. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, it's just I, I don't know. He it, was talking about the law of the triangle, bro. Right. Like consciousness and how it expresses itself into reality, stuff like that. So it's it's just this like this. Western and I don't know what the intent was or well I mean I think we have a good idea what the intent was for for that sort of teaching like going back to like the early 1900s and even a little bit before then like you know they were trying to disconnect our spirit we do know that in the 1800s there was like a resurgence of occult knowledge again like helena blavatsky and all that that was i'm Alistair pretty crowley pretty uh, early yeah, 1900s yeah, yeah early 1900s for sure he was the dark side of it but of he course. was you could still he was a part of it right you know and you have like stuff like this and and there is another document that i didn't get excerpts from that i wanted to talk about called the aquarian gospel of jesus christ mm. and it was written um I'm not exactly sure what year I can look it up, but it was like 1911 or 1913 or something like that. And it was written by Levi H. Dowling. And it is a very, very interesting document. There are some discrepancies in it, but I think overall the general premise is very cool. And Levi H. Dowling. 1908. 1908. It was written. Even earlier than I thought. The, yeah. The Aquarian so Gospel. Of we're seeing Jesus a trend Christ. here. Early 1900s and late 1800s. Uh, Rudolf Steiner, 1800s. Mm, right. And, and, and many others. Um, uh, William Walker Atkinson wrote uh, the, um, what's it called? The Kybalion, my favorite book. Oh, wow. The th it, you know, under the pen name, The Three Initiates, while mm -hmm. they believed that one of those authors was William Walker Atkinson. And um, there was these... There was just so much like prolific esoteric content that was coming out in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. I think it was like, again, it was like one of those windows of energy, mm. right? And there was this resurgence of this hidden knowledge, which, dude, I mean, just uh, 50 years before that, the Quakers were killing people. Yeah. Not really would, 50, probably more like a, a little, couple hundred. Right. But, you know, just, just before that, the Quakers were killing people. If they, <laughs> you know, the Scarlet Letter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We like, learned about that. Yo, she... Kill her. <laughs> she got sexual. Yeah, kill her. Kill her. <laughs> they weren't talking dark. about age of Aquarius and stuff like that. No, you know what I mean. Like dark it was, stuff. it was very dark. Oh yeah. And and the span of humanity, from the time of when Jesus was born to you know the late 1800s when all this occult and esoteric knowledge started being kind of reemergent into the public eye in a bigger way. Oh, Edgar Casey as well, early 1900s. From those, you know, from the early time period to the time period I just said, it was literally 
slaughtering people yeah. if they had alternative thought. Right. You know what I mean? But I see what we're going through now as a shedding of even more old thought. And I feel like, I feel like as more people learn the truth about the beings, the entities, whatever you want to believe that they are. I mean, there's certainly some advanced consciousness coming from another place that is eternal. Um, I think as people deepen their understanding of this, it's going to rapidly dissolve how people see the other world. Cause dude, it's like, the majority of the people on this planet have their belief in the divine, in the supernatural, in the post-mortem experience, mm -hmm. strictly based off what is written on pieces of paper. Right, right. In mostly exoteric religions. And they're ready to box over it. Oh, kill. Hey. Murder. Yeah. The fuck you say about my book? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're, oh, throwing, yeah. they're throwing hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've read it way more they're than you. They're throwing bullets. You know what I'm saying? Oh, literally, yeah. literally. Yeah. Like, my God is fierce and mighty and more powerful than your... Okay, you get the point. What's going to happen when the whole world is exposed to the real beings? You see what I'm saying? Perspectives are going to rapidly start shifting. It, it, things are going to dissolve. Right. You know how and, many... That couldn't happen instantaneously, right? We were talking earlier about how, like, the slow drip thing, it's going to happen slowly. It's going to be a shift. Like, it's the same thing as, you know, if these were real nuts and bolts boogermen, you know. And it's like if they just came down and boom, there they are, the whole entire planet would be in complete and total chaos. Yeah, it would be the other way around. It'd be like, oh, well, you know, maybe... It isn't a spiritual thing, but it would still be the same concept. It right. would dissolve everything we know. Exactly. You know, either way, it's going to dissolve. Yes. Everything we know, and yeah. and and that's what I see happening. I th I think that, I think that that's what it's like. It's twofold. You know, it's the story of Palm Sunday in the Bible. My dad raised me with this scripture, and he always told me, "Son, this is how it works. This is how prophecy works." Now, I can't quote, I'm not, I was never a pastor. I can't verbatim quote it off the top of my head, but I can tell you the story, right? So in the story of Palm Sunday, um, Jesus is, is, is riding into town. You guys remember Palm Sunday. It's like the mm -hmm. Sunday before Easter, mm -hmm. right? And he's riding into town. That's the story when they wave the palm leaves and they're like, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know? Right. And Jesus is like, well, the prophecy says that the Messiah would ride on a donkey so I'm going to ride in on a donkey. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, this is what it says. Therefore, I'm going to do it. Therefore, it will be true. Right. But it was written that it would happen, and it did happen, whether he decided to do it or not. So therefore, it was true. Yeah. So there was two conditions. There was him taking the action to manifest it, but it was also written hundreds of, you know, probably hundreds of years in the past, prophesying that it would happen. Right. So it was this great cosmic perspective that it was supposed to happen. But then there was the microcosmic perspective that he said, okay, let's make it happen. Right. right? Yeah. And it's the same with what we, the human race are experiencing. You know, we understand that there's going to be a shift. There's going to be some sort of divine intervention and there's going to be some new transformative energy that is going to increase and it's going to allow us to connect more with the divine. That's the macrocosmic part, right? Mm. But then the microcosmic part is like Jesus's part where we all, every living individual human on this planet has to look within ourselves and, and, and introspect and say, you know, maybe I should do my part and mm. try to change. Right. Because if I do my part, it's going to help everyone else. Yeah. It's twofold. It's a conundrum. It's like prophecy is like, it's like a, it's, it's man, it's manifold. Right. It's like a Mobius strip. It's like it, it, it infinitely flows in and out of itself. And it's like, I can't explain it. I could, you know, come up with so many more words to explain it, but like it happens from two dimensional perspectives, but either way it is going to happen. Right. Whether you know? you're aware of it or not. Right. It's kind of the whole plot of God of War Ragnarok is like. And Dune. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Dune's another perfect example. It's like they hear the prophecy and it's they like, plant the prophecy. Right. The prophecy was planted long, long, long ago. But the person that the prophecy is about is aware of the prophecy 
and they're like, well, this is the decision I would have made either way. So just because it's written down here doesn't mean I'm going to lean into it or away from it. This is just what I would do anyway. So I'm just going to do it anyway, even though that says that, you know, whatever. Or maybe they're inclined to see it as a good thing that they're doing it because it's been prophesied, whatever. It's just it's it's a, a common re recurring theme, you know? Yeah. It's it's that thing of like fulfilling your destiny on your own terms. But it was written in advance that you would do it. Right. You know, right. It's, it's a conundrum. It, go, it goes back and forth over yes. and over. It's that's, that's what I meant by it flows in and out of itself. It's like, I think of like the infinity symbol, like it's, it's eternally connected and, and you know, you can, in, you can interact with both sides of it and it's entangled with the other perspective of it, but both are true. Um, I do have, I believe one more. Yeah. One more excerpt. When we consider the Zodiac and its religious as well as its evolutionary aspects by is the same text, by the way, gotcha. the, the message of the stars. Gotcha. When we consider the Zodiac and its religious as well as its evolutionary aspects by means of the six parts of, excuse me, the six pairs of opposite signs into which the 12 may be divided. We also commence with Cancer and Capricorn for the reason given in the previous article, namely that these are the solstice points where the sun reaches its highest and lowest declination meaning cancer is the summer solstice it's the highest point of the sun mm. in the peak of the summer right in June mm -hmm. and then Capricorn is the descent of the sun the winter solstice right, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, then again if we if you guys remember our Halloween episode same concept here the winter symbolizes the death of the sun but right. also literally on the physical plane life is dying the animals aren't procreating many animals are hibernating crops are dying you know there there's there's the there's the uh the metaphorical symbolism of the forces of the cosmos and then there is the reality on the material plane that yeah. is the effect mm -hmm. right and think about the peak of the summer the plants are blooming the animals are getting buck wild with it and they're spreading like crazy. <laughs> the world is flourishing. It's yes. Beautiful. Yeah. And the sun is at its highest point. Right. You know, so very cool stuff to think about. Considered in this manner, we find that there are two sets of three pairs of signs. The first being Cancer and Capricorn, Gemini and Sagittarius, Taurus and Scorpio. In these pairs of signs, we may read the history of human evolution and religion in the early, the middle and the latter third of the Atlantean epoch. In the other three pairs of signs, Aries and Libra, Pisces and Virgo, Aquarius and Leo, we find the key to man's development during the Aryan epoch. This is also divisible into three distinct periods, namely the Aryan age from Moses to Christ, which comes under Aries, Libra, the Piscean age, which takes in the last 2000 years under the Pisces, Virgo, Catholicism, and the 2,000 years which are ahead of us, called the Aquarian Age, where the signs of Aquarius and Leo will be illuminated and vivified, vivified by the solar procession for the upliftment of the Son of Man, Aquarius. By the Christ within, the Lion of Judah, Leo, to the estate of a superman. Like, we will be like a superman, is, is what it's saying. Like, we will be evolved. Damn, with superman? I, I know, right? I loved that. I had to include that. Damn. It must not be thought, however, that the Atlantean epoch only lasted while the sun by procession went through Cancer, Gemini, and Taurus, a period of only 6,000 and a few hundred years. Far from it, but there are spirals within spirals, and recap capitulation takes place in the epochs and races so that we may know what is the general destiny by looking at the sun's passage through these signs and therewith taking this import and symbolism into consideration it may also said that the further we advance the smaller do the spirals become the shorter the time in which a given improvement is made because of the proficiency we attained in former ages and therefore it is extremely probable that this present is the last lap that the coming aquarian age is the final preparatory school age school day which will fit us for the new age the sixth epoch and that will begin when the sun by procession enters capricorn remember i was talking about how it's a scale for the gradual transformation of humanity, and as we get closer to the Aquarian age, the scale gets smaller and smaller and right. smaller, and the transformation is more rapid, more rapid. Well, 
he was just talking about how there's spirals of energy throughout the epochs that they get smaller and smaller and smaller mm-hmm. as we get closer to the Olympic I was thinking age. that. And I forgot to drop this quote, but I'm just going to look it up because it's a Bible quote and it's easy to find. Um, Jesus, the water pitcher. The water pitcher? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. He talks about that you'll see a great sign in heaven when the man carrying the water pitcher comes, which mm. is Aquarius. Mm. It's the symbol of Aquarius. <laughs> I, I, I forgot to write it down, but I wanted to read the scripture real quick. What? That's nuts. Jesus and the water bearer. Help me find it, Alex, so I don't look like a goofy goober. <laughs> You're a goober. Damn, I don't goober. know why I didn't write that one down. I told you I had a stressful day today, y'all. It's a leap day. Oh, Luke twenty two ten. Okay, here we go, here we go. Really, bro? <laughs> no, not Libra. I got it. I got not Libra. Beho- Here it is. All right. Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. Now, the Rosicrucians, in, in that book, The Message of the Stars, I forgot to grab the excerpt, but in that book, he quotes this, and he says from the Rosicrucian perspective, it's, an esoteric metaphor for follow the man with the water pitcher. It's, mm. it's the new age, you know, Dude, that's so great now in, I, th- I think, hang on. Sorry. Go ahead. This is, this is Luke twenty two ten to 12. He said, keep your eyes open. As you enter the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him home. Then speak with the owner of the house. The teacher wants to know where is the guest room? Where can I eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a spacious second or second story room swept and ready. Prepare the meal there. And I didn't really touch on this yet, but the final thing I, I mentioned the Levi H. Dowling thing. I didn't even say what he did yet. So in 1908, just like Edgar Casey, he's actually compared to Edgar Casey because they have very similar messages. He claims that he translated from the Akashic records a new oh. gospel, and he calls it the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, that's what that is. And it tells the story of the missing 18 years of Jesus. It tells when he went and learned from the sages, the seven sages of the world is mm-hmm. a chapter. I don't remember the countries, but let's just say if I'm trying to remember, it was like Greece, Persia, Tibet, India, Egypt, you know, it was stuff like that. Right, like he, yeah. he went to different regions Just like the esotericists say, he's saying he channeled this from the Akashic Records, tells the 18 years of Jesus, you know, the missing years when he became a sage, and also that he was preaching basically about the coming age of Aquarius, that there would be a new age of enlightenment. So we can go on and on and on about the age of Aquarius. My point is there has to be something... Whether you believe in our story, whether you believe in the hippies in the 60s who were getting down, you know, cutting a rug, <laughs> talking about, you know, whatever they were talking about, Age of Aquarius and all that, or, or, or you know, I don't, I don't care what you believe. What I do care is that you recognize that there is some evidence that is piling up that is telling you there will be a shift in consciousness. There will be a shift in consciousness. That's all I want people to understand, you know, that... It's important that we don't have so much fear and so much negativity and so much doubt now in the state of the world and how things are. But it's important that we have hope and faith that things will be better. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? That's what's truly important. I feel like sometimes people like hyper fixate on like the details like, okay, but when exactly is it or when what exactly is that going to look like or that it's it's the same thing with the, the beings. Well, well, what exactly did the craft look like? And like, what exactly? The, it's like you're completely going right over. You're the asking point. the wrong questions. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, that's that's what that made me think of. And you know what? For me, for you, for anyone, it could be right now. Yeah, it's a state of mind. It's alchemy. You know, it's it's just it's, you know, the the these texts that I was just reading from, they're way bigger. I literally grabbed tiny excerpts that were directly related to the age of Aquarius. You see right, what I'm saying? Yeah. There was way more. Yeah, yeah. And and they literally talk about like how 
I, I can't believe for the life of me I didn't save this part, but it even talked, oh, oh, you know what? I did. I, 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 I know what I did. I didn't write them in my notes because I was pasting them in Discord. So, uh, so check this out. I actually have a couple more smaller excerpts. It was killing me. It's that leap day brain. I was like, where, where? I didn't save the, here they, here it is. Telling you, bro. So it's in the message of the stars. And remember, we were talking about the symbolism of the sun and the zodiac and how they represent, you know, the advancement of human religion and stuff like that. And you can think about the story of Moses and the bull, the Taurian age. You can think of the story of uh, the ram and the gold fleece, the Aryan age, Jesus right. and the fish, the Piscean age, right? Mm -hmm. the, these these big metaphors are referencing the astrological age. These spiritual advancements are dictated by the astrological age, right? So in that book, The Message of the Stars, it says... The sun is therefore an apt symbol of the Savior, born to feed his flock on the spiritual bread of life. But as we must have eyes attuned to light to see the sun, so must Christ be born within before we can perceive spiritual light. He's not, this is a Rosicrucian. He's not talking about being a born again Christian. Right. He's talking about awakening Christ consciousness, being loving and kind and humble and, 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 and doing the alchemy of the soul, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's metaphor. The mystic marriage of the lower self to the higher, the immaculate conception and the divine motherhood which nourishes deep in its bosom, unseen by a scoffing world, the newborn Christ, are actual experiences of a growing number of people. And without the celestial prototype, fructified by the solar procession, this would be an impossibility. Neither has this ideal been realized in such fullness during the past ages as today. The reason of this will appear when we take up the joint consideration of opposite signs of the zodiac. So, it it's just it's basically telling you that the way to the, the premise of this, right? The crux of the message of this document was like, okay, so the stars are telling this this symbolic story of the evolution of our spiritual, scientific, philosophical states of thinking and knowledge it's you know our consciousness is being dictated by the positions of these stars he's saying in order to progress to the final level you have to mirror the story of the stars well what's the story leo and the virgin and the sun it's 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 the father the son and the mother but also it's the illumination it's like we have to metaphorically we have to metaphorically have the christ born within us Right. It's not about there was one Jesus, there was one Christ, there was one Savior. No, no, no. The real story is it's the story for all of us on the individual level together trying to help each other reach this higher state of consciousness. Right. 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 So it's it's about the microcosm. It's not literally about the, the macrocosm. It's it's a it's a metaphor. Yeah. It, it, it's about our journey. Exactly. Down here. All of us. Yeah. Every single one of us and through all of us doing that within ourselves we will help each other exactly yeah exactly yeah yeah and with that i am resolved okay with that you, <laughs> that was very yeah. formal yeah so <laughs> with that i am resolved yeah man exciting things ahead this is so nick's been living here two weeks now and uh it's his last night and he's going home tomorrow and we'll, you know we'll cry a little bit boohoo and be sad and sobbing and then <laughs> but literally then the next day the next day you're gonna move like a mile away <laughs> i can't yep. wait i'll be right it's gonna be just like when we were growing up yeah like a mile down the road we're gonna live like okay so we grew up half a mile from each other so i think we could we could live with the the mile from yeah, each yeah other. for for the past five plus however many years it's been like i don't know 80 miles. Yeah. Well, I was going to say almost 100 miles. <laughs> Towns so. away. Right. Yeah. yeah no, two hours. Exciting stuff ahead. Thanks for dealing with our leap day mumbling brains. <laughs> but um, I feel like that was some deep stuff. So yeah. love you all. Love you all. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Leap day. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.